Hey, welcome to the Reddit time. I hope you're having a good day and let's hop into this thread. Sex shop and sex workers of Reddit. What are some of the best examples of clients not knowing how anatomy or sex works? I managed poor stores to get myself through college. One of the girls I felt most sorry for was a chubby girl, no hate here, who said no one would go down on her and she wanted to know what oral sex was like. I pointed her to a little pink butterfly toy that had battery operated suction. I gave her a handful of free loop samples to go with it and wished her luck. She came back to the store later the same night, toy in the back I sent it home in. She was upset and wanted to refund because she said the butterfly was very uncomfortable. I quickly told her all sales final and then asked questions. So the girl had inserted the hard plastic butterfly suction side in. She had no idea that she had a clitoris above her vaginal opening that could bring her to orgasm. I sent her on her way with some education and more loop samples. I didn't see her again though. So let's call it a win? She is probably a sex fiend now. Good sex toys can turn a person down a dark road. A good internet connection does the same, but with their powers combined. Sex shop worker here. I answered a call from a man who had purchased a sounding device. It goes in your urethra if you didn't know. He couldn't get it out. I asked him if he'd used loop and he told me no and that it was starting to hurt. He asked if he should yank it. I just had to tell him to contact his doctor. I hope he got it out. Oh god, why would you not use lube? Why would anyone stick anything inside their urethra? My whole body just involuntarily shuddered thinking about it. How do people get pleasure from this? What the fuck? Edit. Okay, turning off home notifications, trying to work from home and getting constant pop-ups about people inserting scenes in their dick hole. How did he get it in there without lube? I actually can't imagine that. The correct answer is young that shit like you're starting a lawnmower. Customers firmly placing their thumb above my pubic bone, not moving it, watching me have literally no reaction and then believing that they brought me to orgasm by doing that. I forgot that this post was also asking for sex workers to comment and I thought you meant a sex shop customer and I was like Jesus Christ! Still wild though. Oh my god, I forgot it too. This doesn't quite count, but kind of, before the twist ending. So I worked in a sex shop when I was 18. They had a stuff party and being the new recent hire, I had to stay and maintain the shop. Fair enough, senior may, junior must. I get this girl coming at like 10.30, half hour before closing. She wants a dildo but says she's never bought one before and needs assistance. Sure. I mean I hadn't even known one myself but I had been there a month or so and had read the packaging while stalking so I knew a bit. Also we were encouraged to look up sexy toy related articles on the work computer during slow periods. So okay, we go over. She says she's looking for something without vibration as it doesn't do much for her. Straight up dildo. So I show her a few but she is not interested. Bigger, she says. My ex was big and I need something similar. I miss him. Okay, so we go bigger. I'm pointing out 7 inch dicks and whatnot, and she's like, no, bigger. Oh, so I point out a honking 8 inch one. She sighs and hems and hoes and then she says, no, bigger. What about this one? Near the bottom of the rack was something with a name relating to a horse. I can't remember the actual name. It was like an 11 and half inch long dildo. Not only is it most certainly a fetish scene and definitely not something her ex had, this girl was like 5 feet and 100 pounds. But that's what caught her eye. So me, being all professional but internally thinking, bitch you wanna die? I explained to her the size and the girls and give her a light warning of potential medical hazards if used improperly. She breaks out laughing and then my boss is walking. Turns out she worked there as well, but since we were a one-person staffed establishment, I had never met her. She was sent in as a joke, have fun on the whole time so the owners could hear what I did when this tiniest chick asked for her cock. Well, congratulations on passing their professionality test, damn. I even told her the risks of using silicon-based lubricant on silicon horse dicks. I got a shining star for customer service. One more. I had a daytime regular named Terry. This was 20 years ago, but I'll never forget this old guy's name. He would stop by for 10 minutes, grab a rear chest from the begging bin and attempt to flirt with me while checking out. One day I noticed Terry is in the male enhancement section and he's been there a minute. I wander back and ask if he has questions. He is holding a penis pump and very seriously asks if I could handle something that big. I laughed out loud. That usually shut down any advances, but Terry kept at it. He told me there were obviously women who could handle it or we wouldn't sell them. Then Terry told me that his dick no longer got hard, but if he were able to keep suction on it while he put the toy or himself inside a vagina, that just might work. He never came back into the store after his purchase that day. Maybe it worked? 
Or maybe some woman killed him for trying to shove a fucking penis pump inside her. Former sexual cracker here, I'll tell a story that kind of fits this. A tower store we sold an array of dildos. Some gag gifts, all shapes and sizes and colors, etc. The largest one by far was called the Great American Challenge. It is a purple behemoth that I'm fairly certain is Garcia's in my arm. I'm a skinny guy. One day this guy comes in asking for a big gag dildo for his friend. I show him the big cheap ones. They about 20 bucks but large. Still smaller than Great American Challenge, so he says he wants something even bigger. I tell him there is nothing bigger that's in that price range. He then asks to see the bigger ones anyway, regardless of price. I show him the Great American Challenge and tell him the price is 70 bucks. Dude gets wide-eyed and buys it right away. He says, and I quote, this will be the great gag gift as a paperweight. Now we get the gag gift cover-up quite often. Girls use it all the time to buy for bachelorette parties, you aren't fooling anyone, ladies. But this guy using it with our largest dildo was not surprising. I assumed, however, that he knew what he was doing. About an hour later I get a call from what is clearly the same guy. I know it's him because he says he just bought a purple dealer from us that is very large. And that's only the great American challenge. We sell them once every couple months at best. He asks me what's the best way to use it. Confused, I ask if he has any prior experience with smaller toys. He says no. This is his first time. I advise him to not use the toy and start smaller. And says it's about all the advice I can give you. He then one ups himself and asks if he needs lube or if petroleum jelly is good enough. Of course you need lube, what the fuck, man, I reply. He says, well, I don't have any damn, guess I'll just win it. Thanks for the advice. And he hands up. I don't know whatever happened to that guy, but I'm assuming he ended up in the hospital with quite the story. No idea how it got that far, my ass, dog. I must have slipped and fell. My best friend was an ear doctor. He used to say the human anus must have an incredible targeting sense based on all the times people slipped while naked and accidentally fell on various objects at just the right position and angled to perfectly insert them. Working in an operating room, I can agree with your friend. Pulled a glass ketchup bottle out a few weeks ago. Guy said, I was eating a hot dog in the shower and slipped and fell in the bottle. I worked at a sex shop for like three years and the scene that irked me the most were people who were willfully ignorant about loop. Even after I'd explain why it's good for you, they'd be like, no, this is for old ladies. For either anal or vaginal sex, it's there to reduce friction and make it more comfortable and safe. Many men and women have this misconception that if a woman cannot produce enough moisture on her own, then there is something seriously wrong with her. It's actually very common for women of all ages to use lubricant from time to time, either because they are nervous or inexperienced, having very rough sex, or because their bodies simply don't produce that much. It would hurt me to think of all the women, especially experienced ones, getting their candles just fucking shredded because men or other women are shaming them for needing lube. Working there taught me that a surprising amount of people are very stupid selfish lovers. Be careful out there, folks. I had an ex who hated lube. She wanted me to fist her and when I tried to lube up, she'd ask me to towel off my hand because it's too slippery, I want to really feel it. I've got huge hands, by the way. I had a guy who wanted to meet up for full service but said he didn't want me to be disappointed by how small his dick was. He said, don't worry though, I'll bring a banana for us to use so you'll still be satisfied. Keeping your potassium levels up is so important. This is the funniest scene I've read on this thread so far. I hope you ate the banana. I once spent 20 minutes desperately trying to get a guy to buy enough lube after he told me that his girlfriend insisted that he get some, because his initial attempt was him spitting on his dick and showing it in her ass. I'm a salesperson, but I'm just being kind when I tell people to buy more than they think they need. He blew off my advice and bought a dollar foil packet of lube. Many of these stories sound like people who have learned everything they knew from porn. If only they realized that's like if people went around believing that if you run off a cliff you don't fall until you look down because they saw it in a movie. Client was a middle-aged married man, kept hustling for no condom and I kept refusing. He asked why I wouldn't do it because surely I'm on the tablet to stop myself getting pregnant. I explained that condoms were important in protecting against STDs. He literally did not know what an STD was. I spent a while explaining to him and he started to worry that his wife would find out he was seeing sex workers because he hadn't been using condoms. 
He said, so if I catch something my wife would get it too? That's actually pretty scary. I'd hate to be his wife. I worked at a local sex shop last summer. Women always asked help from me because the only other person working was a guy. They wanted some sex toy but didn't know exactly what. I would usually ask something along the lines of what makes you come easier, clitoral stimulation or something inserted in you. I was the only for two weeks and during those two weeks at least seven women said, oh, I've never had an orgasm so I don't know. Most of them were women under 25 but the oldest was around 35 or 40 and married. That poor woman. Thank you for watching this video, I appreciate you sharing your valuable time with me today. I think you noticed that I really like the story with banana, <laughs> it's really funny I think. And you can write in the comments down below what is your favorite one in today's thread. Also subscribe to my channel, give me a big thumbs up and see you in the next video.